nervous system is divided into central and peripheral nervous system. Central nervous system comprises of brain and spinal cord while peripheral nervous system consists of cranial and spinal nerves. Brain consists of cerebral hemispheres, brain stem and cerebellum. Cerebral cortex is a convoluted structure curved upon itself. It consists of multiple tortuous folds called gyri separated by deep grooves called sulci. On the lateral surface of the cerebral hemisphere, there are two important sulci that make important anatomical landmarks and these are central sulcus and lateral sulcus also called sylvian fissure. Central sulcus divides frontal lobe from the parietal lobe while the lateral sulcus marks the upper boundary of temporal lobe. Occipital lobe is separated from other lobes through an arbitrary line. This gyrus in front of the central sulcus is called precentral gyrus and it serves as primary motor cortex. This is the command and control center for voluntary movements. If we look at the cross section of the cerebral hemispheres, you will notice a darker outer layer called gray matter and inner lighter area called white matter. Gray matter primarily consists of neuronal cell bodies while white matter is made up of myelinated axons of these neurons. If we look microscopically at the cerebral hemisphere outer layer, you will find different types of neurons arranged into six different layers. And can you see this tiny beautiful pyramidal cell? in layer 5 of cerebral cortex. This neuron is the boss here because he controls lower motor neurons. These pyramidal cells send their axons all the way down to brain stem and spinal cord, innervate lower motor neurons there and tell them when to fire. These lower motor neurons in the, in the brain stem or in the spinal cord in turn innervate skeletal muscles and cause their contraction. These neurons, these pyramidal cells in layer 5 of the cerebral cortex are called upper motor neurons. The distribution of hundreds of thousands of these pyramidal cells is not random, rather it follows a unique topographic distribution. Pyramidal cells innervating lower motor neurons for lower limb are located on the medial surface, while pyramidal cells innervating lower motor neurons for the upper limb are located on the lateral surface. This topographic distribution has important implications in localization of neurological lien. Uh, on the lateral surface of the dominant frontal lobe, which is the left frontal lobe, in most of the individuals, there is an area called Broca's area or motor speech area. And other area at the junction of parietal and temporal lobes is concerned with the analysis of sensory input related to speech and this is called Wernick's area. Cerebral hemispheres are connected to brain stem through cerebral peduncles. Brain stem has three parts and these are midbrain, pons and medulla oblongata. A number of cranial nerves leave brain stem and uh, a third and fourth cranial nerves leave midbrain while fifth, sixth, seventh and eighth cranial nerves leave pons. Last four cranial nerves leave medulla oblongata. Medulla oblongata passes through foramen magnum and continues as spinal cord. Spinal cord has 31 segments. So there are 8 cervical, 12 thoracic, 5 lumbar, 5 sacral and 1 coccygeal spinal segment. 
If we look at the cross section of the spinal cord, you can see that inner gray matter contains neuronal cell bodies while the outer white matter contains myelinated axons that constitute both ascending and descending tracts. Anterior horn cells located in the anterior horn of the gray matter, they constitute lower motor neurons. They leave the spinal cord, pass through the peripheral nerves and innervate skeletal muscles. The low motor neuron supply of upper limb comes through C5, 6, 7, 8 and T1 spinal segments through brachial plexus, while lower motor neuron supply of lower limbs comes through L1, L2, L3 and L4 spinal segments through lumbar plexus. Now we will discuss in greater details the concepts of upper and lower motor neurons. As you know that pyramidal cells of cerebral cortex are the upper motor neurons and their axons make two important descending tracts and these are corticobulbar and corticospinal tract. Corticobulbar fibers innervate cranial motor nuclei while corticospinal fibers innervate spinal motor nuclei. So the corticospinal tract uh, if we discuss in greater detail, the pyramidal cells send their axons all the way from cerebral cortex to the spinal cord through corona radiata, posterior limb of the internal capsule, cerebral peduncle, midbrain, pons and medulla. But to make things complicated and a bit tricky for medical students, these fibers take a sharp turn at the level of lower medulla. They cross the midline, go to the other side and then descend in the spinal cord as lateral corticospinal tract. So that means that right sided pyramidal fib uh, neurons will innervate left sided spinal motor nuclei. So there is only the spinal nuclei get their innervation only from one side and that is the contralateral side. On the other hand, cranial motor nuclei, they get their innervation through corticobulbar fibers. But since cranial nuclei are higher up in the hierarchy, they are, they are rich, they are affluent, they are privileged. So unlike spinal motor nuclei, they get their upper motor innervation from both sides, which means that one cranial motor nucleus will get its upper motor neuron supply from both right and left side. So if there is damage to one sided corticobulbar fibers, uh, a cranial motor nucleus will still get its upper motor innervation from the other side. But there is one exception and that makes all the difference in localization of neurological lien. And that different nucleus is the nucleus of facial nerve. So facial nucleus is a hybrid. Think of a centaur in Greek mythology that has a human head on horse torso. So facial nucleus also has two parts. The upper half of the facial nucleus is like all other cranial motor nuclei that get their innervation from both sides while the lower half of the facial nucleus is like other spinal nuclei that get their innervation only from one side and that is the contralateral side. So think about right facial nucleus. The upper part of the right facial nucleus that innervates frontalis muscle gets it, its corticobulbar supply from both sides. While lower half of the right facial nucleus that innervates lower half of the face gets its innervation only from the left side. So only the left corticobulbar tract innervates lower half of the facial nucleus. We will shortly discuss the implications of this anatomical uh, phenomenon. 
Lower motor neurons are the neurons that innervate skeletal muscles. So skeletal muscles of head and neck region are innervated by lower motor neurons located in the brain stem or cranial motor nuclei. And skeletal muscles of upper and lower limb are innervated by lower motor neurons located in anterior horns of spinal cord. So these lower motor nuclei send their or neurons send their exons through spinal roots to spinal nerves, plexus like brachial plexus in upper limb and lumbar plexus in lower limb and then form peripheral nerves that innervate group of skeletal muscles. So nerve fibers in these peripheral nerves innervate skeletal muscles through neuromuscular junction. So damage to these lower motor neurons right from their origin from the spinal cord in case of spinal nerves to the distal end of the axons can lead to lower motor neuron type weakness. So the different categories of lower motor neuron type weakness include myelopathy which is a disease of the spinal cord right at the level of anterior horn cells radiculopathy which is the disease of nerve roots, plexopathy which is a lesion at the level of plexus or neuropathy or peripheral neuropathy which is a lesion at the level of peripheral nerves. Before we embark upon the detailed discussion on motor weakness, let us briefly discuss uh, sensory system and the ascending pathways. Pain and temperature sensations are carried through spinothalamic tract while fine touch, vibration and proprioception are carried through dorsal column tract. There are some general rules that apply to sensory system. There are three orders of neurons in our sensory pathways. First order neurons are peripherally located. So for both spinothalamic tract and dorsal column tract, first order neurons are located in dorsal root ganglion. The second rule is that second order neurons always cross the midline. So for spinothalamic tract, the second order neurons are located right in the spinal cord in the dorsal root or dorsal horn of the gray matter. So these first order neurons innervate with these second order neurons in the spinal cord and axons of these second order neurons then ascend a few segments up and then cross the midline to go on to the other side and continue as lateral spinothalamic tract. And third order neurons of the spinothalamic tract are located in the thalamus. The second order neurons for the dorsal column tract on the other side are located in the brain stem in medulla. So what happens that these first order neurons they ascend in the spinal cord on the same side as dorsal column tract or as fasciculus gracilis and cuneatus until they reach to the lower level of the medulla where there are two important nuclei nucleus gracilis and nucleus cuneatus. So neurons in these two nuclei form second order neurons. And then axons of these neurons cross the midline, go to the other side and then ascend as medial lemniscal pathway. Again, the third order neurons of this pathway are located in the thalamus. So now you can understand that if there is damage to right spinothalamic tract, there will be loss of pain and temperature sensation on the left side. While if there is damage to right dorsal column tract, there will be loss of vibration and proprioception sensation on the same side, on the right side. Now we'll, uh, this was the brief overview of the neuroanatomy and the ascending and descending pathways and we'll go in further details of hemiplegia and paraplegia.